price of gold is holding steady after the US Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen. She said that the central bank would only gradually tighten monetary policy, which means expectations of another rate rise this year have been pretty much diluted. We've got John Butler of Gold Money joining me now in the studio to have some, some golden analysis, if you like. Hello to you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you, uh, you are our gold expert that we have in. But What's the situation right now in terms of fundamentals? And then we're going to get stuck into the chart. Well, the fundamentals are interesting here because, as you just said, you have the Fed kind of beginning to blink for the first time mm -hmm. in, in an awfully long while. Right? We've been in this tightening cycle, which is a very, very small tightening cycle, but we've been in it for a while. And now you're finally getting the Fed suggesting for the first time we're nearing the end of this tightening cycle, which is a, which is a bit of an odd thing to say, given how small a tightening cycle it's been. But then, hey, if you do look at the fundamentals, um, inflation appears like it's maybe going to start declining again. Leading indicators are pretty mixed, but as many are weak as are strong, so the economy is kind of limping along. Mm -hmm. um, you have you know good reasons perhaps for the Fed to be cautious here, but in that context. Gold should be trading better than it is, which is a little bit worrisome. And why isn't it? Well, it's a very good question. And it could be a partially technical explanation because the whole bull run that got going with a lot of momentum initially back in 2000, late, late 2015, yeah. that bull run was a series of higher highs, as by definition a bull run has to be. But the last time gold tried to reach a fresh high a few weeks back, it failed to reach a higher high from the previous one. And so it leaves the chart looking technically weak. And indeed, momentum has been gradually fading for a full year now. Let's have a look at the chart while you're explaining this, John, okay. because it's very clear to see what's going on. It's just bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. That's right. Now, all of this is happening in what is historic historically a fairly narrow range. But technically and from a, moment, a momentum perspective, it's starting to look like a bearish chart. It's starting to look as if we're going to have to test the fairly hard support that we had around the 1100 level mm -hmm. before we can clear this out and maybe try again for another meaningful move higher. And that meaningful move higher, when would we possibly see that? Well, again, ultimately, it's going to come down to fundamentals. I mean, charts, don't get me wrong, they can tell you a lot of interesting things. But if you're trying to think materially, meaningfully about the medium to longer term, it's going to have to come down to fundamentals. This is where, in my opinion, the Fed beginning to blink potentially becomes far more significant. Mm -hmm. Because in fact, the way that I choose to look at the US economy, what I see is that a huge amount of the growth that has been generated over the past few years mm -hmm. was strictly a so-called inventory cycle. That is, businesses stockpiling inventories in response to unusually low interest rates mm -hmm. and unusually easy credit conditions. And so they stockpile inventory. Um, now, of course, they're hoping, of course, that eventually the customers, the final demand comes along to sweep up that inventory. It hasn't happened yet. And yet the Fed's raising rates. So the cost of holding that inventory has begun to go up if only slightly. But that's very concerning because it means that a lot of that growth was not sustainable growth. It wasn't real final demand growth. It was an inventory cycle. That is not a strong recovery. That's a weak recovery. And it's not self-sustaining in any meaningful way. And therefore, the Fed blinking now could be the Fed actually cutting rates before the end of the year if inventory destocking begins to take place. There's been some concern about the auto industry. Well, this is where you see the inventory cycle in all its glory. That is, a, a prolonged period of very low rates and easy credit conditions, including for specifically subprime auto loans, mm -hmm. that is, loans of you know, poor credit quality. Um, that's really driven that market. And you see all the major auto manufacturers with huge built-up inventories now, which at the current rate of sales would take over a full year to clear in some cases. That's, that's a huge inventory overhang. However, a lot of the subprime financing for cars that has been done in recent years, some of these leases are coming due. They have to be rolled over. But those rollovers are based on residual used car values for the collateral behind the loan. And if you have excessive new car inventory competing with these used cars coming onto the market and being repriced, well, the whole price level of all of it can fall to a point where it implies defaulting on some of these loans because the residual value of the car is too low. Mm -hmm. And you can't just roll it over anymore. So this could be a real problem for auto demand, specifically. Uh, but not and for, inventories. Gold. for gold. Well, no, in theory, gold benefits from that. Because mm. if that just contributes to the perceptions that the Fed has that the economy is slowing down, mm. and they uh, start to talk about out, maybe outright cutting rates at some point, mm. then uh, gold should get a, a solid boost from that.
Okay, John Butler, thank you very much indeed. Always really interesting uh, with a different opinion there. Talking about the technicals and the fundamentals of gold and indeed the US economy as well.